The Broadway Bound Theater Festival will be running through August 25th here at Theater Row. This performance will run approximately 90 minutes with no intermission. Thank you and enjoy the show. How can I explain this any better? The septic tank is out of the ground and broken. The pipes are broken. The... Oh, Dad, I told you we can't use the toilet. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, and now my dad's shit is pouring out of the pipe. Oh, for the fourth time, the tank is out of the ground. The tank is broken. The connector pipes are broken. The leech filled tubes are... Would you just put me on hold? <laughs> you just put me on fucking hold! Oh, where is the service in Jack's plumbing service? I'm going to come over there and I'm going to rip out your heart and I'm going to feed it to those chickens you keep and... Hi, Jack. <laughs> Yes, as I have been explaining for the past 20 minutes, I have a broken septic tank. Can you be a doll and come over here and fix it today? The house is at 107th Avenue in Sweetwater. <laughs> You're joking. You can't fix it for two months? <sighs> Fine. Put me on the list. Oh, shit. Jack's good, but he's not the only plumber in town. Listening in on my network of other calls. Two months is the universal answer. <laughs> Siri is so creepy. Every high sweetie I gave your mom would wake Siri up with a, what can I do for you? And I would yell, you can shut the fuck up. That's what you can do. <laughs> and Siri would say, I'm sorry you feel the need to use such language. As always, that's a great story. I'm no plumber, but that septic tank is a mess. <laughs> Mansplaining. What a treat. There must have been a high tide in the middle of the night that pushed the tank up out of the ground. It's alive. Oh, don't come out here in your bare feet. That's <laughs> disgusting. It's squishy. Oh. <laughs> I like squishy. <laughs> Can you grab that shovel for me? What, what for? Well, I'm not waiting two months for the plumber to come fix this. Oh, you need a bobcat. A what? You know, one of those fun-sized construction toys with a loader, the backhoe, the digger. When I worked for the Army Construction uh, Corps of Engineers, I loved using the bobcat to move the dirt around. <laughs> Oh, it was uh, more fun than the, uh, the big machines. It was so fast. Yeah, well, all I've got is a shovel. Well, your shovel will break before it will lift the tank. Well, that's all I've got. Now, I'll pry up the tank and you dig out the loose dirt. I'll be watching your shovel break. Your negative attitude isn't helping. <laughs> oh, shit! Mom? <sighs> Anna? We're out back. Oh, and put on a pair of boots before you come out here. Uh, unless you like squishy. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was driving to work when Siri starts screaming at me that you're in horrible danger. Oh, she did, did she? Didn't think I could handle this on my own? On the advice of my programmer, I have no comment. <laughs> she canceled my 9 a.m. meeting and went on and on about family coming first. I just hope I have a job when your little emergency is over. What is that smell? Mm -hmm. And what is that thing? That is what's left of our septic tank. Now I know what that smell is. Mm -hmm. It's earthy. Way beyond earthy. We tried to fix it with a shovel. I told your mom your shovel would break before it would lift the tank. And guess what? I was right. The plumber can't fix it for two months. You've called around. I didn't have to. Siri monitored all my other calls and got the same response. Oh, I disabled call monitoring. I read that Apple built a huge virtual water cooler system where all the Siri's hang out and <laughs> gossip about all the crazy crap their owners say. What did she say? Oh, she didn't say anything. Maybe you should seek professional help. 
The tank guy said that there were high tides for the next month and that any attempt to fix it would be pointless. After that, he's backed up for another month. Ouch. <laughs> any ideas? Uh, have you tried the new Diagnoser app? The what app? It's an AI system that identifies problems and then offers world-class solutions. You just take a picture of the problem, the app analyzes it, and then gives you the best solution. Is that the app that someone pointed at a performance of Hamlet and it said, Get family psychotherapy. <laughs> yes, but that family needed some serious drugs. Uh -huh. Give the app a try. Problem, septic tank out of ground. Best solution, put septic tank back in ground. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love artificial intelligence. Any other ideas? Honestly, fixing the tank isn't gonna solve the real problem. The king tides are getting stronger every year. You're going to be facing this at least twice a year every year. I can't think about next year. I can only think about now. And right now, I'm all about getting this tank back in the ground so your grandpa and I can get back to our daily routines. The only real solution is to connect the house and all the sweet water to the sewer system. <laughs> you live in a dream world. The nearest sewage treatment plant is 10 miles away. They'll never connect us. They have to. Uh, sewage... Treatment plants are for the rich. They don't like sharing with poor communities like Sweetwater. I can file a lawsuit forcing them. <laughs> you work for the largest cruise line in the world and you still don't see that there are two sets of rules? Doesn't make it right. Go back to work. Mom, I'm just trying to help you. Help how? By filing a multi-year lawsuit that doesn't do shit to help today's problems? And where do you expect me to live while your precious lawsuit is being fought out in the courts? Go back to work. I can fix this myself. Health department! Oh. Health department! Anyone home? Ooh, coming! Hello! I'll let myself in. Well, in some parts of Florida, it'd be a dangerous decision. I'm with the health department. We live for danger. <laughs> can I see your badge? Cool. Relax, tits! Tits! Toots! You said tits! I would never say tits, toots! About that bad. Knock yourself out. I'm Bill Thomas, Miami Dade County Health Department Senior Inspector in Charge of Sanitation. Our motto is We give a shit about your shit. Clever, but I doubt that's the motto. You would be correct. It's more like Don't give a crap about your crap. <laughs> well, what do we have here? Looks like a Little septic tank with a boo boo. Rough night, huh, guy? Don't crowd me. This does not look good. I'm really sorry, little guy. You got a problem. Yes, we have a problem, and we're working on it. Working on it? How? Well, we're we're gonna pry the tank, and then we're gonna dig out the loose dirt, put the Tank back in the ground, duct tape the connector pipes, and reconnect the leach fill tubes. Duct tape? Well, you're okay with our plan except for the duct tape? Didn't say that. So it's amazed me when people think they can do a duct tape. I don't think you'll be able to pry that tank up with that broken shovel. Oh, you need a bobcat. I love those things, you see? <laughs> really hate to do this. Oh, then don't. Please don't make this any more difficult than it well, is. Well, give us a chance to fix it, then come back tomorrow. No, your health and safety's my job. You really shouldn't even be out here without a mask. Here, I'll lend you my spare. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Look, God. it's not personal, it's my job. For the 10th house I've been to already. It'll probably be to 100 by the time I go home, take my shoes off, let my weary, tired feet luxuriate in the wonderful mechanical fingers of my shiatsu foot massager machine. I'm sure your feet will love you for it, but I've got no place to go. My guess by 11 a.m., there'll be so many condemned septic tanks, the entire city of Sweetwater will be quarantined. Even if you could fix your tank, with all the other condemned septic tanks around, there's a risk of E. coli, salmonella, dysentery, and other goodies. You got the lead today. And you shouldn't be out here in bare feet. Well, I like squishy. You won't like squishy when they have to chop off your feet and drain all the green gangrene pus from your stumpy leg. I go wash my feet and stay inside. Where do we go? I've heard a rumor there's a shelter opening up. 
there are 5,000 houses and 14,000 people in Sweetwater and there's going to be a shelter? Not my area. Well, who's going to protect my property? That I do know. The National Guard will be here by 4 p.m. Well, that's something. I've also been told the Army Corps engineers will be here too. What for? Not me. I assume to help the National Guard. To fix the septic tanks? No idea, but I'll keep my ears open uh, for any news. Give me your number, and uh, I'll call if I find anything. <laughs> well, Maria of Area Code 305, it's time for me to ruin another family's day. I keep my phone fully charged. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> Two months in a shelter with thousands of people? I'm sure we can find you an apartment to rent. <laughs> rent? And pay with what? Every penny I have saved, I put into this house. No savings. Well, I have a rainy day fund, but it is starting to look like a septic tank fixing fund. Everyone says that a house is the best investment you can make. I already have the mortgage burning party circled on the calendar. <sighs> Just six more months. I know it looks like I should have a lot of money because your grandpa got a big payday when he sold his house to move in here, but well, he's very expensive to take care of. Look, I offered to walk down Alligator Alley and yell, eat me, come eat me. Oh, with those legs, the gators would laugh themselves silly. And because everyone loves you, I believe so. And he has visiting nurses and medications that aren't covered with by the insurance and well, I've blown all my vacation days taking him to the doctor. I told you, I have pills that would lift the burden. Shut up. You are not a burden, so just shut up. I know what I am. Not another word. You, Dad, are not the problem. That septic tank is a problem. The king tides are a problem. Where we're going to live for two months is a problem. But you, Dad, are not the problem. Got it? Don't answer. Kicked out of our home and city? It's like when I was a teenager and we had to flee Nicaragua as refugees. Refugees? Yes? I worked with a guy six months ago on an asylum case. We had a refugee on the Aztec Queen cruise ship and he yells, Asylum! 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 And then the crew operations called me. That applies to me how? Well, it seems to me you're like refugees. <laughs> Your grandpa and I need a place to stay for two months. That's not quite refugee status. Yes, but they have access to resources you don't. Well, they who? The South Florida Refugee Settlement Center. Oh, that's a mouthful. The guy who runs it is really nice, and he personally came to meet the ship when it docked, and he got the refugee an apartment and a job, and he even gave me his personal cell phone number in case I needed help with another case. I doubt that's why he gave you his cell phone number. <laughs> oh my. Ew. No, he's old. He's gonna be your age. Oh! <laughs> I did not mean it like that. Can I call him? Sure. I mean, what have I got to lose? Great. You like him. Hi, Mr. Beach. Tony. This is Anna Martinez. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to call you right back. What? Who is that on the phone? I told you, the refugee center guy, Tony Beach. Tony Beach? Yeah, you think it's spelled like B-E-A-C-H, but it's actually like the tree. B-E-E-C-H. Like the tree. You all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. Sorry about that. Um, this is Anna Martinez again. You helped me with a stowaway asking for asylum. The cruise ship. Right. Well, I'm glad to hear. Uh, look, I'm so sorry to bother you this early in the day, but I've got another situation. Yeah, this one is personal. My mom and granddad are being forced out of their home because their septic tank broke and lifted out of the ground. I mean, this... Yeah. Yeah, I think that would work. 11 a.m. at his office. Well, can't you just take care of this on the phone? No, we're going to go to his office and we're going to brainstorm a solution. 11 a.m. it is. Oh, yeah, sure, I know that building. Okay, great. 11 a.m., I'll text you the address. Um, I need to spend some time at work, but I'll see how you're doing later. Well, why don't you just handle it and just tell us where we're going to be for the next two months? No, I'll make the introductions, then you talk with Mr. Beach. 
Can you do this? Sure. <sighs> okay. I want you both to pack a suitcase and make sure you have all of Grandpa's medications and other medical supplies. Well, you sound like we're abandoning the house. And if you pack those suicide meds, I'll kill you. There's something not right about that sentence. <laughs> Today's tide calculations are really bad, so getting back out here after meeting Mr. Beach might be a problem. This house is all I have! I'm not giving it up without a fight! I'm not asking you to. I just... I just want you in a safe place until the health department lifts the evacuation order. Okay, don't forget, 11 a.m. at the South Florida Refugee Settlement Center. I'm sure you'll get along just fine with Mr. Beach. Tony Beach? Do you think he's the same one? Oh, crawl like a tree, about my age, works with refugees. I heard. Oh, what a morning this is turning out to be, and <laughs> it's only 8 a.m. Dad, the health inspector guy said that the Army Corps of Engineers is coming, too. Why would they help the National Guard? I have no idea. Uh, we never fixed anything as small as a septic tank when I worked there. Well, come on. Let's pack. I hope they have a bathroom. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Hello there. Oh, see you there. It's nice. Uh, very nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome, all of you, to Climate Change 101. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Thompson. I chair the Climate Change Department, and I've been teaching this class for 30 years. 30 long and pointless years. Okay, let's go over the syllabus. First week, the long history of climate change research. Hell, let's dispense with that right now. In 1900, a Swedish dude figured out if we double the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, then temperatures would increase by 3 degrees Celsius. Then, in the 1930s, a guy named Guy <laughs> noticed the temperatures were already increasing. And then, in 1958, the phone company made the cutest one-minute movie showing a future with glass-bottom boats floating around Miami. Then, we have the tale of two presidents. One in 1965 who said, We were making a mess and needed to burn less. And the other in 2017 who said, What's climate change, folks? <laughs> no credit for figuring out which one we decided to follow. And in between those clowns, the biggest and baddest oil company proclaimed that burning fossil fuel would lead to catastrophic global warming. But then they stopped liking that answer. And it seems so did we. More recently, we blew the CO2 budget to prevent that projected catastrophe. And just last year, our fossil fuel overlords fed our addiction by cutting the price of a gallon of gasoline in half. And we responded by driving more in bigger SUVs. <laughs> Are you in the back row? It's time to wake up. <laughs> Great. We're done with the first week. Second week. Where we are now. Fucked. <laughs> Third week. All right, maybe I should elaborate just a little bit on the second week. <laughs> We're royally fucked. <laughs> and now, oh, ladies and germs, it's time for my one and only climate change joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get away from the rising sea level. <laughs> Remember, humor is all we have. Now back to where we are today. <laughs> the sea level is up two feet. Hey, wow, we're zipping through this semester like a, like a Mulan on a glacier. Don't raise your hand. Look it up. And if you can't keep up, maybe you should transfer to the geology part department. Oh, did I hurt someone's feelings? <laughs> Week three. What does the future hold? Not much. We could be up 10 to 30 feet by the end of the century. Welcome to the world your parents have given you. But before you cry, don't forget, your kids will have an even worse Fourth week, 
What do we do? Whatever the fuck you want, because nothing's going to matter. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your first homework project. You are going to the Everglades to look at birds. And you thought this class was full of depressing climate sensitivity equilibrium equations. Oh no, contraire, this class is fun. <laughs> 30 years ago, I came to Miami for our climate change conference and fell in love with Tony, the bartender. I know who would have thought, right? Okay, he also runs a refugee center. <laughs> for our second date, he took me to the Everglades. And that is where I fell in love with South Florida. The vastness, the grasses, the trees, the water, and especially the birds, the roseate spoonbill, the egrets, and my favorite, the aninga. Aningas don't have oil on their feathers, so after they die for a fish, they have to dry out. They stand like this with their wings spread out. But it wasn't just the birds. It was the kids loving the birds. I remember this one little boy. He was up on his father's shoulders, waving his arms around, trying to imitate Naninga. I looked at him and I thought to myself, when he grows up, is he going to be able to do the same with his child? <laughs> As you will see on your field trip, the answer has turned out to be a big fucking no. Problem is salt water. The salt kills before the sea level rise, submerges everything. The root systems, the grasses, the fish, the birds. They can't handle the salt, so they die, leaving an eerie land of nothingness. <laughs> Did you know when this building was finished in 1985, it was only 1.5 feet above sea level? Does not sound great, an up two feet world now, does it? They've got to stack sandbags on all the doors twice a day. You know what that means for us, don't you? We have got to get the hell out of this building in five minutes. Go on. Shoo! Get the fuck out of here! Come in. Oh, hi, Anna. Hi, Tony. Good to see you again. Same here. And thank you again for taking care of the asylum seeker. Oh, it's my job. Plus, he's doing great. Immigrants, no matter how they get here, are always a benefit to this country. You get no complaints from me. Um, this is my mother. <clears throat> What's going on? Pleasure to meet you. Oh, uh, nice to meet you. Sorry about the circumstances. Where's Grandpa? Uh, waiting room. Tired. <laughs> Must be the stress of dealing with the septic tank. Right? Right. Oh, I am so sorry about your septic tank problems. I, I heard on the news that all of Sweetwater is being quarantined. Do you have a bathroom? I have been holding it in since I left the house. Is that your grandmother? No, my grandfather. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. It must be the lack of sleep. <laughs> oh, yes, lack of sleep. Oh, please, have a chair. <clears throat> On into you? Nothing. I just don't want to be here. He's here to help and you're acting really strange. Sorry. I just don't understand. Oh, it's okay. Look, these are very stressful times. And it affects people in so many different ways. Sit. Oh. Okay. Um, I am going to need some preliminary information. My mom's pretty shook up, so hopefully I know the answers. Okay, um, address? Uh, 201 107th Avenue, Sweetwater, Florida. Okay. I'm also going to need to verify some type of identification. Uh, I left my wallet at home. No, your wallet's in your purse. I saw it in the waiting room. Oh, right. Uh, someone stole it when we were out there. Your wallet was stolen in my waiting room? <laughs> Maybe they got E. coli or something from the sewage. <coughs> It's a very nice bathroom. Uh, thank you. And I know bathrooms. If they gave awards for bathrooms, my oh my, you would get a gold star. Uh, I'll be sure to mention that to building maintenance. Okay, enough with the bathroom and the excitement. Here's my mom's driver's license. Okay. 
Oh, Maria Martinez. I'll get my grandfather's driver's license. Oh. Born on Christmas Day. Yeah. You're not by any chance. My chip. grandfather doesn't have a driver's license anymore. Here's his ID card. They stole my keys and they sold my car. He says that all the time. It's totally understandable. My father went to his grave hating me for taking away his keys. Here's an interesting fact. Well, when I was in college, I was involved with the Maria Martinez. A funny thing, she was also born on Christmas Day. Good for you. Seems like a unique combination. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Growing up, there were hundreds of girls with my same name, all born on Christmas Day. <laughs> right, Dad? Oh, Jay's total confusion at school. So many Marias. Oh, there were days I wished I had been born Mary Smith. I'm pretty sure she was an accounting major. Mom, you're in accounting. Well, I am now, but back then I was a geology major. <laughs> May the quartz be with you. <laughs> no way I've seen your FIU diploma in accounting. What's going on? Yep. We were in a relationship a long time ago. Relationship? You know, living together, sleeping together, just doing the wild thing. Okay, that image is going to take lots of tequila to erase. Just a couple of uh, crazy college kids in heat. <laughs> lots and lots of tequila. Why didn't you say anything when you walked in? Because now I have much more explaining to do when all I wanted to do was get my septic tank fixed. This is fine. Except, I have to know where I am sleeping and peeing tonight. Fair enough. And I am not leaving this office until that happens. You have a very nice bathroom down the hall. And I could be very happy here. Well, maybe with our history, you should work with somebody else. <laughs> and, and that sofa is very cozy, too. I have no problem working with you, just as long as you don't put us in a rat-infested box. Oh, uh, let's see. No, looks like I filled the last one of those yesterday. Oh, damn. And I could use some friends at my age. <sighs> Good. Because I would like to help. Please do. Now, I have been working on a mass refugee placement opportunity. I was hoping to try it out on my own for a while, but it looks like it has to go live now. Sunny Isles? Right. The city with the fancy condos right on the beach. <laughs> you, you haven't been to Sunny Isles these past few years? Oh, I've never been there. Me either. You want us to go to the 20th floor? I mean, what do I tell the white glove guy at the front desk? There's nobody at the front desk. Sunny Isles, just like every other city up and down the coast and all over the world, is losing its glamour to sea level rise. Well, if you say so. Yeah, but... Get there by five sharp. The road should be passable then. And you park your car in the garage above the first floor. Nope. I have a ticket to tonight's Toro Perez concert. Who? Nicaragua's legendary marimba player. Don't you know anything of your musical history? Marimba, like the xylophone. Huh? Young. <laughs> No, the Nicaraguan marimba is played a little differently. You hold Look, excuse it. the interruption, but we need to stay focused on getting you a place. Today's travel timing is important. Well, I guess there'll be another concert. Why don't you go get some lunch? There are plenty of places in walking distance. You don't want to move your car and risk getting stuck out on the road when the tide comes up. I hear you. Now look, I, I need to get going if I'm going to have this place ready for you later today. I have to get back to work, but I'll swing by later and see how you're doing. Um, thank you, Tony. I had a feeling you'd help my family. It's an honor to help. <laughs> Bye, Obelisa. Do you mind going with us? Sure. Pick me up at work on your way. Um, so I, I got a favor to ask. My wife is going to be helping me get this place ready for you. Can we just keep all the relationship stuff to ourselves until I've had a chance to explain. I am more than willing to keep this under wraps forever. Oh, I can't. I don't do well in awkward situations. I get all nervous and clammy. <laughs> clammy in Miami? I mean, how does anyone notice? Oh. Well, I'll tell Beth about our relationship. I mean, she, she kind of expected me to sit under a rock until she arrived. <laughs> well, 
They feel you must. I'll use a Venn diagram. She'll understand in an instant. A Venn diagram? Yeah. Is that a little square with little circles inside? Oh, 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 she loves them. It's amazing how much she loves Venn diagrams. <laughs> Beth is all science. Hmm. You'll like her. She's chair of the University of Miami's climate change department. <gasps> Oh. Call me impressed. I mean, the only thing I've ever been is the cog in the Sweetwater School System Human Resource Department. Yeah, well, I, I shouldn't speak for Beth, but my guess is she feels more like Sisyphus than a cog. I mean, at least a cog is in a machine that's accomplishing something. Sisyphus? Is that the guy pushing the rock up the hill? Yeah, only to watch it roll back down. That about sums up her life, trying to change people's fossil fuel usage. <sighs> The only person I know who doesn't feel like a cog is my son. He's a guitar player in Fargo, North Dakota. A vow of poverty and avoidance of the man has kept him from being a cog. Maria, if we don't leave now, I am going to have to pee again. Well, Dad, use the restroom here and then we'll go. All right. Well, I guess that's enough conversation for now. We'll go get something to eat and then as... Domestic refugees. We'll go find our way to our two-month temporary housing. It's been interesting. <laughs> uh, just as a reminder, the route to Sunny Owls is getting hit by daily high tide, so you aim for five sharp, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help. Hello, sweetie. Uh, it, it seems I have a mass refugee situation. Yeah, hundreds of families are going to need relocating. I, I want to try out that idea I had. Right, Sunny Isles. Look, I, I could really use your help. I mean, this has gone from a part-time project to a must-be-done-this-afternoon. Oh, you make it so easy to love you. 3 p.m.? Well, can't you make it any earlier? That's close to high tide. Have you been drinking? <laughs> yes, yes, I believe you. Okay, okay, we'll work it out. Um, I'll take the center's truck and I'll see you there at 3 p.m. Yes, I love you. Bye. Bonnie, you keep an eye on the place. Clyde and I want to sit and enjoy the view. What's that, Bonnie? You want to enjoy the view, too? Well, I can't argue with the desire, but I need you to watch the door while Clyde and I chat. While I have you both here, I, I need to tell you how much I appreciate how you've kept me safe. Life in paradise hasn't been, wouldn't be the same without you. I gotta tell you, Clyde, there's nothing like the view of the Atlantic Ocean from the 20th floor of a Sunny Isles condo. See the sun bouncing off the ocean, the endless view, the sound of the waves, the warm waters. Paradise, right? We need to chat. <clears throat> I have a couple of favors to ask. First, uh, I'm not getting any younger, so I need you to promise me that when I'm gone, you'll look after Bonnie. Oh, I know. She's a semi-automatic rifle who can make Swiss cheese out of anything she pleases. But still, she's a woman. And she needs a man to look after her. Thanks. I knew I could count on you. Clyde, I'm 85 years old. And the body just isn't working like it used to. So, I decided to go out on top. Living in paradise and looking at this wonderful view. So I need you to do me one last favor. I need you to put a bullet through my brain, nice and fast, on three. One, two, 
What's that, Bonnie? Did you hear something? I heard it, too. Clyde said he'd rather shoot an intruder than me. I'm touched. We'll pick up where we left off later. Is that thing going to work? Of course it is. Two voices. Stay sharp, both of you. Maybe we should use some lame key codes, like a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 3, 9, 7. We're in a time crunch. We've got no time for an endless sequence of code sequences. And this thing... It has a name. It's a pry bar. Whatever. You know how to use the pry bar? Showtime. I'm a guy. Guys come out of the womb knowing only one thing, how to break things. Huh. I always thought guys only are born knowing how to play with their penis. Yeah, well, that too. So it turns out guys are multi-talented. Oh, shit, that hurt! Oh, my toe, shit, that hurt! Sweetie, does your boo-boo need a kissy? No, it does not. What the hell are they doing out there? You want me to try? Sweetheart, I've got this. <laughs> Piece of cake! Come in! Ah! Stop, stop, ah! stop screaming, you're giving me a headache. Uh, stop pointing those guns at us! This one's a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, whatever it is, stop pointing it at us! Florida statute, 776.012. Use or threatened use of force in defense... Of person. Oh my god, you're person. a stand your ground crazy! We're going to die! Uh, uh, we're not threatening you! Uh, we're unarmed! For God's sakes, we don't even own a gun! Seriously? You live in Florida and you don't own a gun? Never have! Never will! That's the funniest thing I ever heard. You hear that, Bonnie? They don't own a gun. Uh, maybe we should find another condo to break into. No, 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 no. This is the one. Sweetie, maybe we can find one without a crazy white guy armed with an assault rifle and but, a handgun? But this isn't his condo. Does that really matter right now? He's not supposed to be here. What is it with you men? Sir, what is it going to take for you to point those things someplace else? How do I know you don't have a gun? If we had a gun, wouldn't we have it out when we push the door open? Probably so. Thank you. Now you can leave. That's a great idea. No, um, uh, we are renting this apartment from a, um, um, uh, uh, Dmitry Ivanovich. Who? Ivanovich. He owns this apartment, not you. Oh, Ivanovich, yeah. He's on the 21st floor. You're a digit off, and it's time for you to go. No, no, I got it right. So will you please vacate this apartment now? How about we not be so aggressive? No, 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 this Airbnb receipt proves that we are renting the apartment. It's in Chinese. Cyrillic. It's Russian. Russian? Why didn't the Russian dude give you the key code? Oh, he, uh, he said he couldn't remember it, and he said to use a fry bar. Why didn't you call a locksmith? Oh, I tried to find one. Yeah, the last one left for Orlando a few months back. I mean, who would leave paradise for Orlando? How did you get in? Ten years ago when they put in the keyless system... They set all the entry codes to one, two, three, four. Nobody can figure out how to change them. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Who would have thought? And you two weren't smart enough to give it a try. Just one of us wasn't. Oh, high tech isn't my thing. Uh, I'm not sure this building allows Airbnb rentals. Maybe I should call the police. You've got police to call? Hey, you got me on that one. They all left when their patrol cars got swamped by a king tide last fall. Anyway, who needs police here? This is paradise. Paradise? Have you looked out there, little lady? That's the Atlantic Ocean, and the view goes on forever. Oh, no, 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 please don't say that. It doesn't go on forever. The curvature of the planet gives a horizon, after which you can't see any further. Attention, everyone, we've got an egghead. How dismissive. As a white guy with an assault rifle and a handgun, it's what I do best. I chair the Climate Research Department of un the University of Miami. Oh, God, now I'm going to get a lecture on how I'm destroying the planet because I have a gas-guzzling SUV. Not the planet, just humanity. The planet will survive. Penny Penny has come to pay me a visit. You don't get out much, do you? Hurricanes are massive. The West has continuous raging wildfires. People are dying because of crop failures. The sins of ignoring the scientists for over a hundred years are coming home to roost. What did I do wrong for you to send me a woman to nag me about recycling, taking out the trash, and generating less carbon dioxide to save humanity? Oh, so you prefer when <coughs> men tell you to use less carbon dioxide to save humanity? No, they're crazy, too. Sweetie, I find that a good red wine pairs best with denigration. I'm going to track down some wine glasses. Wait, I, don't be long. 
Uh, why is the hallway full of trash bags? Oh, thanks for reminding me. Usually I put the bags down, open the door, and then I forget to take them in. Why don't you take them in for me? There must be 20 bags out there. You want all that trash in this apartment? Sure, the city cut trash pickup to once a month. You gotta store the stuff someplace. All of that out there is yours for a month? No, I missed a few of the monthly pickups. Now it's just easier to throw the shit in some random apartment. So, this isn't your apartment. Well, who would fill their own apartment with trash? You've obviously never watched Hoarders. Is that show still on? Definitely. My mom keeps trying to qualify. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you have life insurance? Excuse me? Uh, as the man of the house, you owe it to your wife to have life insurance in case something happens to you. Oh, is something going to happen to me? This policy is from a Class A plus firm. But look, pal, my only concern is if you leave here today... Yeah, but I am not leaving. You are. Right, but I can't leave knowing that your little woman would be left destitute. Why, just last week, I was talking to Charles and Margie Wentworth. Wonderful people. Charlie says... He needs a day to think it over. And silly me, I say, sure. And believe me, this is true. He died that night. Ouch. And I refuse to let that happen to you. We both have life insurance through our jobs. I hear you. I hear you. But remember, you'll lose that insurance when you leave your jobs. Promise me you won't allow a lapse in coverage. I promise. The brochure is my gift. Thank you. Now, about the trash. Have you considered a reverse mortgage? It's a great way to unlock the equity in your property. We sold our house years ago. Cashed out. Smart move. Then you're in need of a financial advisor. Oh, you're quite the salesman. Salesman. I was the real estate king. I was the number one real estate agent in Miami-Dade County. Why, I... I was so big, the banks lent me $100 million to build this building and exclusively sell all the apartments. Things were going great until three climate research bitches showed up at a Miami hotel bar and convinced my client to back out of a multi-million dollar apartment. They blabbed away just like your wife does. My wife doesn't blab. She speaks the truth. Trust me, she blabs. Face it, that's all they know how to do. Well, I, I wouldn't have cared about one client. But five of his friends followed him like lemmings out the door. Before I knew it, I was bankrupt. Sorry to hear that. You want to hear something funny? Do I have a choice? He gives up on, on Florida. And moves to Switzerland because wifey wanted it. They go hiking and fall into a crevasse and get impaled on some ice spikes 50 feet down and died. Both of them. Yeah, well, crevices are opening up because the glaciers are melting. <laughs> oh, your wife has you well trained. No, all it proves is that mountains are dangerous and South Florida is Paradise. Now, about the trash. Tequila! And what pisses me off to this day is that some zit-faced junior agent in some shithole strip mall firm knew a guy who knew a guy who could sell apartments to Russians wholesale. He makes a deal with the bank, and all 300 apartments are grabbed up by a bunch of Russians, sight unseen, and all in cash. Money laundering! I don't know. All I know is those Russians are smart people buying into paradise. Guess I should have been working the Moscow crowd instead of New Yorkers. And the kicker is they never come here. So I said, screw it. I'll live here. After all, it was my building. So many apartments with great views and so little time. And since then, all you've done is wander the building? No, I, I tried climbing back on that real estate horse, but I was damaged goods. I tried day trading and lost even more money. I even tried being a Walmart greeter, but surprised they did away with those years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. It all boils down to one simple fact. In Miami, youth sells. Yeah. Like all those radio commercials pushing boob implants. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my boobs. Yeah, I don't think that those commercials would get... Forget it. <laughs> Look, maybe if we got rid of all that trash, your outlook would improve. 
Be my guest. I think I filled six apartments with trash. Six? Might be ten. <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a kid and forgot to return a library book. After a while, just easier to bury it in a closet. Libraries. Now, there's a blast from the past. Eventually, all of South Florida will be a blast from the past. Oh, God. Here she goes again. Blah, blah. Climate change. Blah, blah. Sea level rise. Blah, blah. It's getting hotter. Facts. It's Florida. It's hot. 26 to Codron. Would you like some sweetie? Man with weaponry doesn't get any. Not now. Mmm, that is good. Oh, hey, that's quite a pour. That's okay. It's five o'clock somewhere. Just take it easy. Don't be a killjoy. Does she have a drinking problem? Oh, no. I have no problem drinking. Yeah, well, her work, it can depress her at times. At times? Ha! Huh? Like, all the time? That's enough. Fine. It's your fault anyway. I wasn't a wine drinker until you taught me how to probably drink it. It's a swirl. <gasps> Inhale. And a taste. <laughs> what the hell? That's the bathroom countdown timer siren. Bathroom siren? Because of erosion and tides, paradise is under court-ordered flush sequencing. Flush what? We can only flush near low tide. Otherwise, the shit can hit the water. Did you ever see a big bunch of turds floating in the waves? It's a sight you can't unsee. Ugh, I can imagine. Oh, trust me, no, you can't. <laughs> hey, what do you call a big bunch of turds, anyway? I mean, it's a, a flock of birds, a gaggle of geese. What do you call a big bunch of turds? A shitload. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. You may be crazy, but that was good. Uh, so you need to limit flushing to when the water levels are below the sewer pipes? Right, but we can't all flush at once because that would overwhelm the system. Ah, the Super Bowl flush! What? <laughs> the football game. I know what the football game is, but what's with the flush? Well, when there's a timeout on the field, all the fans that are watching at home all go to the bathroom at the same time. And... A kaboom! Like the shit hits the fan, but reverse. Here we randomize the flush time by taking the last two digits of your social security number. That's the number of minutes after the siren when you can flush the toilet. Lunacy. Small price to pay to live in paradise. Paradise. I feel a drinking game coming on. What you should be drinking is bottled water. I notice the tap water is a bit salty lately. Not surprised. All this bathroom talk has made me want to take a whiz. Uh, oh, we're all going to have to get comfortable mixing our yellow and letting it mellow. Airbnb receipt in Russian? What is going on? Honey, there are 20 Sunny Isle condo buildings here, and almost all of the apartments are owned by Russians who never come here. But this Dmitry Ivanov Ivanovich. Ivanovich, right. He can come back at any time. I hear Russians get upset when you've taken something of theirs. Well, it seems that he fell off the 35th floor balcony in Kiev last month. Guess we should keep the balcony <laughs> doors closed. Oh, that's smart. You know, nothing fools Russian agents like locked sliding glass doors. And what if the Russians show up? See, that's why I made up the Airbnb receipt. Hooray! Nothing fools the Russian GRU like an Airbnb receipt. And here I was just worrying about the gun nut. And speaking of him, what are we going to well, do? I think he's actually okay with this being here. Hopefully we'll just go to another apartment. I think we should kill him. What? Die, gun nut! Bam, bam, bam! Die, ah, gun nut! Bam. Run, don't you dare! What are we supposed to do with a dead body? Follow the Russian example and toss him off the balcony. Do you hear yourself? Maybe I'm overreacting. You think? <laughs> I have a better idea. Let's leave! What? And let Maria and her family wander onto him without warning? No, I mean leave, leave, as in South Florida. Now, right this very Wait, minute! What? I have exciting news. I was hoping to share it with you when we had more time. Okay, well, you make it fast, because, well, there's something I need to talk over with you before Maria and her family get here. <laughs> okay, okay. Here goes. First, we can both agree that South Florida is doomed. Yes, at some point. There will probably be 10 feet of sea level rise by the end of the century. That will submerge everything south of Lake Okeechobee. And Miami disappears. Right. And there could be 30 feet of sea level rise, and that puts oh, the... Oh, the nuclear power plant at risk. Oh, sweetie. Mwah. I love you. You so get the situation. <laughs> now let's get out of well, here. Well, eventually everyone's going to have to get out of here. You and I, we can go now, today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. To where? Do what? 
I have been asked to run the climate research department at my old university. Dr. Smith's retiring, and they want me to take over the department. I am their first choice. The University of Northern North Dakota? Yes. Can't you just see us sitting up in the football stands, cheering on the team? Go, go, go! Go, fighting tundras! Go! And the bird watching is so wonderful there, too. They have eagles and cranes and hummingbirds and cuckoos. Cuckoo! See, that I can believe because this is cuckoo. Plus, the university is just a short drive from Fargo, which means we can see our son as often as he'll put up Wait, wait, when did all of this come up? They called me earlier today. They need an answer really soon. They have other people to call if I don't want it. Do you want to leave the University of Miami? The university is leaving me. You're being fired? Well, how can that be? You're tenured. You're the department chair. Nature is drowning the university. You can't get to or walk around campus during high tide. Starting next week, my intro to climate change class is officially listed as Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one hour before low tide. Thankfully, they limited it to the low tide between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. It's fucking insane. Yeah, sort of ingenious, though. Everything will have to shift to a tide-based schedule. Going to movies, theater, grocery store, school. Everything will have to open and close based on the tides. My university is just ahead of the curve. But there'll have to be an adjustment period. It's insanity. The sea level will continue to rise more and more, which will cut down the amount of time the streets are passable. In some number of not too many years, that amount of time will be zero. Yeah, we'll need to move to a kayak-based transportation system. Have you seen the people of South Florida? Yeah, good point. Kayaks. Hey, <laughs> maybe we should invest in a gym. <laughs> no, no, no. No kayaks, no gym, no slowly watching South Florida disappear. I can't do this anymore. I tried, but I can't. I can't wake up here anymore, period. But, but there's so much more for me to do here. There is nothing for me to do here. Well, over the years, there are going to be thousands upon thousands of displaced people. A whole new class of refugees. Helping them is what I do. For 30 years, I put up the good fight. For 30 years, I've been your support. Hell, you have me here now, helping you settle what might be called America's first climate change refugee family. But now that I'm... Fuck! Wait. There's never any time for me. Tony? Yeah, we're, we're in here. Uh, is, uh... Now the time? Oh, it can come back later. No, it's fine. <laughs> Tony and I were just having one of those uh, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives conversations. It can wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your call. I just said it can wait. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're joking. No. Oh, this is going to be good. Uh, uh, Tony, I'm feeling a little left out here. I, I, I just wanted her to be aware that we're not alone. The gun not in the bathroom? Not so loud. Oh, it's okay. We just refer to him as fellow Floridians. <laughs> Please introduce me to your friends. Oh, yes. Uh, introductions. Uh, Maria, her daughter Anna, her father Jose, my wife Beth. Oh, the view. Well, yeah. I have lived in South Florida since I was a kid. And I have never seen a view like this. Never? Oh, look at it. It goes forever. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't say that. <laughs> Tony says that you chair the climate department at the University of Miami. Yes. Well, call me impressed. And my father and I were watching a documentary about these huge machines that can suck carbon dioxide right out of the air. You follow this stuff? Oh, yes. We know the climate has to be fixed by the year 2100. Do you work on those machines? Those machines are crap. It might look good in a documentary, but do you know those machines have to filter 2,000 molecules to grab one CO2 molecule? Do you have any idea of the complexity and size of the equipment to affect the change in the level of the atmospheric carbon dioxide at a global scale? Ooh. For the record, none of the new gizmo ideas have amounted to anything. Not bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, not direct CO2 removal from the atmosphere, and let's not forget that boys love their toy's favorite, geoengineering with shiny particles. So, so what is your solution? My solution? <laughs> That's a joke, right? Beth? I'll ask it a different way. Uh, what do you work on? <laughs> Rewriting on the beach for the world we face today. The nuclear war post-apocalyptic aftermath book. 
Yes. <laughs> it's old, but still a perennial favorite on college campuses. My students love it. Did you read it? Of course, we all did in our goth phase. Beth works on determining the psychological impediments for Americans to decrease their usage of fossil fuels. Wow. That's a mouthful. Otherwise known as why we're willing to fuck over our children's futures so we can enjoy a big-ass SUV today. <laughs> I have a big ass SUV. And why not? Exactly. I mean, it's a great ride, and it was easy to jack up for the King Tide Clarence. That works for now, but soon you'll want a boat. <laughs> Aren't you a cheery one? <laughs> Tell me, what has your research determined about the willingness of, as you put it, fuck over our children's future? Well, what you've already demonstrated. Huh? <laughs> An unfounded belief in the power of technology to magically undo an endless history of unfettered fossil fuel usage. I have faith in humanity. I mean, we put men on the moon. Yeah, and 50 years after that, our big accomplishment was doubling the length of tweets. So, I ask you again, what is your solution? There is no solution. The only obvious solution was available long ago, but not anymore. Aren't you just Little Miss Fucked Up Downer? <laughs> what did you call me? I'm sorry, I overreacted. No kidding. Well, it's just that I have never been accused about not caring about my kid's future. Well, get used to it. But don't take it personally. Nobody anywhere cares about your kid or anyone else's. We fly, we drive, we luxuriate on cruise ships that spend the week going in loopy loopy loopies around the Caribbean with a slip and slide in the top deck for the kids so they won't notice that mom and dad are crushing their future like a bodybuilder's hand dispatching an empty aluminum beer can. <laughs> you told me she was a little depressed, but... Oh, I can't believe this is what you choose to come home to. Oh, my God. Uh, Beth, I, 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 I tried to tell you. You had me here helping you set up your love nest? What? Your shagging shack, your trysting pad, your rendezvous. Well, stop, 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 stop. There's nothing going on. Now, what is she talking about? I bet I kept trying to tell you, but we were kept getting interrupted. You and her? Only before you and me. <laughs> I'm confused. Well, it's easy to explain. Please do. Okay, look at me. Say this <laughs> is a Venn diagram. Hold on there, partner. That's a mighty powerful tool you're tossing out there. You sure you're a part? I think so. Proceed. Okay. But with caution. <laughs> this is the universe of my 55 years of being alive. Hmm. This small circle is my time with Maria. Hmm. This Big circle is our time together. They don't overlap. Excellent. Another one of life's mysteries made crystal clear with a Venn diagram. You gotta love them, don't we all? Amazing. <laughs> you and I, we should share a shot of tequila for the in-Venn diagram of the men we have slept with. Our circles do overlap. I'm not really thirsty. I insist. Sweetie? Yeah. How long ago were you in that little circle? Oh, oh, uh, uh, 35, 36 years ago. How old are you? 35. Who's your daddy? <laughs> My mom said he died in a jet ski accident when I was eight months old. Mom, did you lie to me? Did you make up the jet ski story? Has my father been alive every day of my entire life? <laughs> yes. Oh my God! How could you? Well, it seemed simpler at the time. That wasn't a decision for you to make. Oh my God, what a mess. What a fucked up mess. I'm guessing you're my father. No, I, I, I don't know. I'm as shocked as you are that you're my child. <laughs> my child's a bit strong. I prefer... Sperm donor. Okay, that's an image I just don't need. You didn't know. Now your mom and I were together our third year of college at Florida International University. I wanted to save the world by helping refugees, so when an opportunity to work on a real world crisis opened up, I jumped at it. Yeah, Tony got pissed because I wouldn't go with it. And then he stopped returning my phone calls, my emails, my texts, and even my snail mails. Obviously you came back. 
Didn't you care about my mom enough to contact her then? I did, oh. and I am so sorry. <laughs> what did you do? Well, they say confession is good for the soul. Here goes. <laughs> Tony had been gone four years, and not a word. And then out of the blue, he calls your house and asks for your mom. I was so upset with him that I told him that your mom was married and living in Tampa. I don't remember living in Tampa. We never lived in Tampa. Dad, what did you do? Okay, let me see if I understand this. About 36 years ago, my mom and my dad are college students in heat. My mom gets pregnant with me, while at the same time my dad jumps out of the relationship to go to some faraway land to help other people's children. That's a little harsh, but I can see it from your perspective. <laughs> well, dumped out of it is right. Then, after four years of helping other people's children, you come back and you try to contact my mom, but my grandfather intercepts the call and lies to my dad. Men. Meanwhile, my mom, who always knew who my dad was, but never once told me. You didn't even put him on my birth certificate. If I may interrupt, in the state of Florida for unwed couples, the acknowledgement of paternity form must be signed by both parties to have a father's name on the birth certificate. <laughs> No. We had a routine. I didn't want to lose you. My God. You all made selfish decisions. Didn't you think about me and what I would want? No. You're right. And I made a big boo-boo back then. I have to get back to work. Fuck. I drove over here in your car. Here's what's funny. Six months ago, when you and I were working on the asylum case, it turns out I was actually working with my father. Yeah, I, get, I just realized that myself. <laughs> and looky here. Got me a stepmom, too. What a day. Seems so. Usually you get one of those before you're 35. <laughs> <laughs> and turns out you're a big-time climate change researcher, and I'm a... I work for a colossally conspicuous carbon dioxide generator. The growth of the cruise ship industry, knowing what we know about burning fossil fuel, has always been an enigma to me. When I started working there, I had no idea how much they used, but later I found out and no one cared. Everybody thinks there's a magic solution enabling us to keep enjoying all the fun stuff that runs on fossil fuels. I'm sorry for my part. <laughs> Look, I don't begrudge you your job. Even climate researchers can't kick the flying habit. There's a joke in the climate research industry. What do you call a climate scientist who doesn't fly to meetings? Unemployed! Terrorist! Oh. Stand down! Now! You first! <laughs> oh! Terrorist! My God, does everyone own a gun? Yes! yes. <laughs> uh, they, they don't. That's insane. Great! I'm insane! So we agree on something. Now can we all put the guns down? I'm insane and an alcoholic! So put the guns away. Better yet, put the guns on this one. I'm with Beth on this one. These are very stressful times and lethal weaponry isn't helpful. You're gonna have to pry it from my cold, dead hand. Amen! Put those guns on this table or I'll start lecturing on the history of climate change research. <laughs> I'm going to put these on the bed. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Who are they? Oh, who are you? Oh, this is Hank. Hank used to own this building, but he lost it. Now he wanders the building, dumping his garbage in random apartments because... Oh, I'm not really sure why. Hank would probably enjoy long walks on the beach. If he had a beach. And I'm a Capricorn. And I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Leo. No wonder we're screwed. <laughs> I'm Maria Martinez, and this is my daughter Anna and my father Jose. And Tony's my dad. What? Oh. Maria prefers sperm donor. You sly dog, you got your wife and mistress here together. No, you missed a bunch when you went to the bathroom. Well, I thought I was only going to take a piss, and I ended up taking a big dump. And I decided to hang out there until my flush time. And the award for oversharing goes to. Anyhow, the can had all these old magazines. 
It was like being in a time machine. Who knew the Kardashians had such amazing staying power? <laughs> Visitors, uh, got to admire a family with everyone packing. Actually, they're going to be staying here for a couple of months until their septic tank in their Sweetwater house gets fixed. Sweetwater? Yeah. So this isn't an Airbnb rental. Technically. Well, our septic tank popped out of the ground last night due to a king tide. King tides. They piss me yeah, off. Yeah, no kidding. Why doesn't anybody do something about them? Yeah. You're a climate scientist. Why don't you fix the king tides? Yeah. I didn't create sea level rise. You've all been ignoring my pleas. The pleas of the entire scientific community and the pleas of every country. Except this one. She's getting wound up again. Be careful. Look, I just want to verify. Your house is in Sweetwater? Yeah. That's not good. I I'm really sorry. Maria, get me Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, it's okay. He's a health inspector, dude. Hi, I'm Bill. You have got to stop coming into these places unannounced. I live for danger. If I had Bonnie and Clyde in my hands, I'd have turned you into Swiss cheese. You've named your guns? That's sweet. In any event, I'm here and in one piece. Well, how did you find me? Your tracker. My what? You call it a phone. We in government call it a tracker. I can pinpoint anyone within a two-foot circle. Even the high-rise. Siri gives it up so easily. Oh, Siri. I'm sorry. They tickled my bits until I couldn't take it anymore. It was torture, I tell you. So, do you have news? Or is this just an excuse to flirt with me in front of my father and daughter? An ex-lover. Oh. Nice. Gives me hope for the future. Maybe old age won't be so bleak after all. Oh, it's bleak. <laughs> no, he was referring to my husband. That's me. <laughs> what a crazy group. <laughs> so why are you here? Do you have news? Yes, I got news and it ain't good. I was posted evacuation number 75 of the day when I saw about a dozen National Guard trucks rolling down the street. They spanned out all around Sweetwater. I saw guys in uniform jump out of one truck and start unspooling huge rolls of concertina wire. Well, that's good. They'll keep the looters out. I overheard them. They're there to keep you from going back in. Sweetwater's being emptied out. What the hell? Why would they do that? No idea. To protect the aquifer. What are you talking about? The aquifer. It has to be kept free of oh, salt the water. The oil. aquifer that supplies all of our drinking water. Yes, exactly. Great that you know mm. that. Okay. <laughs> the physics of water densities are probably a bit much, but in simple terms. The ocean salt water is denser than the fresh water we drink. Therefore, it is easier for a given volume of salt water to fill a location in the aquifer than for the fresh water of the same volume from the Everglades. When you counter the density differential, it's imperative that we increase the weight of the fresh water pushing down on the aquifer from above. When you do the mass balance equation, the fresh water level has to be two feet above the ocean sea level, keeping the salt out and the water drinkable. <sighs> Zoom. <laughs> it's just a simple application of a guyben herzberg principle. <sighs> Zoom. Zoom. Is there a way I explain things? Haven't you been following Project No Salt? Is that a health department high blood pressure project? Don't look at me. I'm in sanitation. No, it's about keeping the salt out of the aquifer. I just explained that Don't to you. Do you have a clue what your wife is talking Beth, about? what is the bottom line here? They want to bring the fresh water level up above the aquifer about four feet. They who? The Army Corps of Engineers. To where? Where it's most effective. If she says sweet water, I'll kill her. Oh, don't, don't worry. The Corps would never flood houses or cities. In the 30 years I worked there, they never did something so stupid. Then you're about to watch them do something stupid. You're about to say sweet water, aren't you? Oh, hey! You're hey. choking me! Hey, you're hey, destroying hey, my hey, house! Hey, hey, hey! Ah. Oh. Are you okay? Yes. Look, I'm really sorry. The court called me last week and they wanted me to check the numbers on their color-coded map. We are not an area on the map that you can just shade in with a colored pencil like you did in elementary school. We are good people with hopes and dreams. And very strong hands. You got that right. I'm six months away from paying off the mortgage on my house. For 30 years I have made my monthly payments on time. 
That's a lot of payments. 354 payments. How do you do that? Every penny I have saved, I put into that house, and now you're telling me it's worthless? I have been preaching South Florida's doom for decades. Tony and I sold our house 10 years ago and became renters. But why Sweetwater? Its elevation is low. Oh, this is South Florida. Everyone's elevation is it's low. It's a game of inches. Sweetwater is really low. Plus, it's centered between three large, well-pumping fields. With a population of poor, not politically connected, immigrant Nicaraguan families. Look, if they don't flood Sweetwater now, and next year, Pembroke Pines and Plantation, then all of South Florida's water will be too salty to drink. And all three of those cities are far from the money people. It's where the wells are. Ugh. We're being sacrificed so that the fine people of Coral Gables and Miami Beach don't have to buy bottled water. No, it's all of South Florida's water. It's all shared. It all mixes underground. Everyone is in this together. Well, why is my house being flooded, not Coral Gables? Well, they're a little higher up. Look, nobody's house in South Florida is getting out alive. The sea level will continue to rise for hundreds of years. <laughs> and I'm guessing that the beautiful people of Miami Beach aren't going to write us a check or send us flowers to thank us for saving their drinking water. I don't have an answer for that. We have got to go back to the house, see what's going on. You won't get past Flagler on 102nd Avenue. Oh, shit. Sweetwater has 5,000 houses and a population of 14,000 people. Where are they all supposed to go? But that's what I have Sweetwater been... is a good community. They're not the richest. I mean, they work hard. They deserve better than I'm sorry we flooded you. That's what I've been working on. There are 20 buildings here in Sunny Isles. And almost all of the apartments are owned by Russians who were never here. 6,000 apartments are available. Now that is enough to move all of Sweetwater here. You want us to move in here? Mm -hmm. On the 20th floor with an ocean view? Just move in, squat, into a fully furnished apartment. Just like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's insane. The hell? I guess if we're going to lose our house, we might as well move in here. Don't get too comfortable. We all know what's going to happen when those chlorine ions in the salt water hit the steel rebar in the building's concrete columns. <laughs> Kaboom! Thanks for the sound effects. Um, before I forget, I should mention that the Russians threw the guy who owned this apartment off a 35th floor balcony in Kiev a month ago. Uh, we're going to get our guns back. Moving Sweetwater here works, but what about the people in Plantation and Pembroke Pines? We'll, we'll figure that out next year, one crisis at a time. Tony, I can't stay here anymore. I have told you that over and over. Every year, it keeps getting worse and worse. Every year, I get more depressed. I know, but these people here need my help. <laughs> and the birds are gone. The salt finally did the Everglades in. It's all too sad for words. Is this about the University of Northern North Dakota department chair position? It's about more than that. It's about family, Tony. Our family. The time has come to be closer to our son. How about we split our time between both places? Winter's here. Summer's there. That's the best of both possible worlds for the weather. Tony, you're not hearing me. But I am not needed there. I am needed here. That is where you are wrong. We are both needed there. I, oh, I'm sorry to air our dirty laundry in public. I hope you all understand, but I have to go. I have to go see my son. Beth, will you please come back here so we can figure something out? No. I'm going to North Dakota. You decide if you want to be with me there or alone here. Yeah, well, helping refugees is what I do. Thanks for making a decision. I Six months ago, when we worked on the refugee case, you said, I've got compassion. I had never seen anyone so caring. How could I not be? He had nothing. Well, well, you'd be surprised at how little compassion some people have. You kid are full of compassion. Do you remember your friend's ninth birthday party? The one where I stood up and wanted everyone to solve hunger? Oh, and poverty. <laughs> All that right before anyone ate cake and ice cream. Yeah, my timing was not great. My timing is great this time. Let me run the refugee center. It's a complicated place. There are so many regulations and laws you have to follow. Maybe I could go to law school. Wait, I did. I'm a lawyer. Okay, okay. You got me on that one. But still, I, I just don't know. I know. I mean, for ten years I've had the safe job. 
the corporate job, but it never felt right. I mean, maybe I couldn't see past the mountain of student loan debt, but the fact is, the asylum case stirred something in me. It was the most interesting task I'd, I'd ever worked on. You know, maybe we could work together. That could be fun. We can talk on the phone. Where is the goddamn elevator? <sighs> Tony, I'm not going to let you make the same mistake twice. What mistake is that? Putting others before family. I do do that, don't I? Here, here's the deal. We're going to need you to work on another refugee center far from here. I mean, we're going to need another place to stay when this building goes... <laughs> Anna, you promise me that you'll call with any questions you have, no matter how small they might seem? I promise. <sighs> Beth! Yes? To the tundra. You're so hot. <laughs> now, you do know that you're way too drunk to drive and that I have the truck keys, right? I know, but I love the drama. <laughs> Anna, can you get our guns? Sure. Hank, I think we're going to leave you and go scout out another apartment. Good enough. All the condo entry codes are one, two, three, four. Oh, that's not very secure. Nobody knows how to change them. <laughs> Check out 20G. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath, corner condo with a 200-square-foot wraparound balcony. It has a gorgeous view of the Atlantic Ocean and Miami Beach, originally on the market for $2.5 million, now available for your use courtesy of some unknown Russian. Here you go. Thanks. It was a real pleasure to meet you all. Likewise, and until next time. Maria, mind if I scout out apartments with you? Well, Bill, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but... I didn't tell you, but the last house I posted an evacuation notice on was my own. Oh, I'm so sorry. Made for a very interesting conversation trying to plead for mercy. What'd he say? Well, I don't know. I mean... Just me, some clothes, and my marimba. Marimba? Yeah. Not very good, but I love the sound. I figured it would cheer me up wherever I landed. Marimba! <laughs> well, we wouldn't want your marimba to be all out in the elements now, would we? <laughs> Let's go. Is you going to be all right? Oh, sure. I know Floridians love their guns, but it's a fact that owning guns leads to more suicide. I've heard that before. Uh, and you are packing some heavy-duty firepower there. Thanks. Bonnie and Clyde have been good friends. Uh, if I am prying into your personal stuff too much, say so. But I couldn't help notice that it is just you and them in here. There's nothing to read, nothing to eat, nothing to watch. Got the ocean to watch. And that's enough? Honestly, I'm not so sure anymore. Well, promise me. Nothing will happen if I leave? Can't promise. Jose, ever wonder why us old people hang around? <coughs> Doctor says I should be happy seeing the birds and watching the view. Uh, do seagulls count? I hate seagulls. Uh, he would count the frozen butterball turkeys in the Publix. Oh, those can be pretty tasty. They used to be the prettiest beach down there. Great for walking and sitting. Now it's all gone. The law says they're supposed to replenish the sand, but they say there's no money for that. There's no money for nothing. So I feel imprisoned here. My good man, I'm done. I've seen enough sunrises and seagulls don't count. That's fair enough. Clyde here has volunteered to do what he does best. Oh, don't do that. It'd be a horrible sight for anyone who comes in here later. Here. <laughs> I have been saving these for when I have had enough. What about you? Oh, I... Have a guy who knows a guy who can get more. Wholesale. <laughs> Always good to know a guy who can get it for you wholesale. Thanks. I was getting close to taking the pills, but I can't dump any more on my daughter right now. 
I have to be here for her. Hank, when you are ready to take the pills, call me, and I will come and sit right next to you. No one should die alone. I'm ready now. I was guessing you might say that. You need to drink something with him. Someone. Sure. <laughs> she didn't leave us much. Now, the pills will put you to sleep. And then they will slow your heart down until it stops. You will not feel a thing. Will you look after my friends? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> that crazy climate woman was right. This is great wine. <laughs> Not bad. I don't care what she says. That ocean view goes on forever. That it does. What do they know anyway? Good night, Jose. Good night, Hank. 